Welcome back everybody and welcome back to an episode of Boosted 2000. Hit subscribe! <laughs> Just about to head up to my mate Ghoul's Garage. Um, we was up there last week, or yeah, last week getting the tracking done. And do you know what? This car drives super, super straight. Check that out. The wheel couldn't be straighter. Anyhow, after doing like a 20 mile shakedown, after pulling now, accelerating the car, the car's pulling to the right. And when I'm back and off, it's going to the left. I was good luck underneath this. I had two, re, um, two front um, wishbones on it. Back in March, we would be in July now. The car's not done many miles. Um, I said, new track would end, so I don't know if it's drumsticks, but he's going to get up on ramps and have a look for me. It's too wet outside, and I'm just too tired of his shit to his car. So, yeah, we're going to do that now. We're going to nip up there and get her sorted. But also, it's important to tell you, I have had an absolutely piss poor week. And I mean a horrific week, okay? And uh, more about that later on in the video. Like, dire, dire week, okay? Let me get up this garage. Let's do this shakedown. Let's get this car sorted so I know what's what. Get my head sorted. And then we go on to the next part. Before, though, before I go quickly, um, that's the gasket that came off the rocker cover that I bought, okay? This is the gasket that come off the rocker cover that come off the car. Um... And that one's got a little insert, like little dowels, isn't it? Yeah, see them there? See them on the edge? See that one on the edge? This one doesn't have it. Nor does the one that went on the car. Ironically, that's where the gasket was leaking. So, make sure you got the gasket with those little dowels on it. Because that's the answer to my question. I later found out. I wouldn't have had to take it back off twice otherwise. Also, I've done another modification of the car. And I don't like it. Can you spot that? So, the black strap brace and the green tops. Just not feeling it. I did think about painting that the green or the yellow, whatever color it is. Um, I don't know. <coughs> Maybe when biscuit becomes stainless and they get the caps on you. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm not feeling it. So despite what everybody said above the neon, I think it worked. 12 seconds later. Okie dokie, so we've been to the garage. We have been out, we've done a road test on a mile or so up the road. Um, then we got it on the ramps, got a pry bar underneath it. And I will show you the findings now. Go on. <laughs> okay, so on first glance, the lower arms look brand spanking new. We've covered like 800 miles. Um, um, yeah, they look great. They are clean, they have no rust on them, they have no dirt on them, they have no blown joints or anything. However, when doing a pry bar test on the rear of the passenger side one, um, as you would have seen from the clip just now, it is absolutely all over the place. So that was quite well hidden. Um, frustrating. But that is where they these ball joints, uh, wishbones tend to go. And it was a Moog one. So I had two new wishbones and two new track rod ends on this car for the MOT. Um, so yeah, some chat video of me going past. Um, so yeah, um, that is the problem. So I'm gonna order them. I did look into comp brake ones with the spherical bearings and new stuff. Issue being is they are very hard and very firm. And obviously I might apparently a bit of a ball ache to set up a track in. So we'll see, we'll park that at a moment. Let's get this car home and let's talk to you about the problems that I'm experiencing with the car anyway. And why this might be the end for the Escort. Okay, so we're home. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to Lee, Lee Gould, Gould's Garage Service, MOTs on that. Literally hooked me up and sorted me out and done that for me. Um, that's what good friends are. Um, look, 
I've swapped these wishbones right there yeah, on this car twice a year, both sides, all over the RS pages, it is common. But, so I've looked in the comp brake ones with spherical bearings and rose jointed. Um, people say that they don't last either and they're a really stiff ride and it's probably not great for the baby. People say about poly bushing, but I've heard about poly bushing's go and that's still like a 300 pound option. Um, but I need to get his car ready for cars in the castle and to do so, I need to get another wishbone. So onto that and get that sorted maybe next weekend. Um, funny enough, now we've done the pry bar test, it's knocking more, you can feel it more of our side. It's just one of those things. One eternity later. Okay, so let's rewind, let's get a better angle. That's better, you can see my head. Okay, so, hope you can hear me, because I don't have a mic or anything on, um, about this video. Okay, so, I've been starting my car, and moving it forward, literally five meters a day, turning straight off, and doing the same going back. Um, I went out the other day, and I haven't done it for a few days then, because we're training in my garage, and we've got a gym and stuff in at the moment, yeah, in Chelsea. Um, Long story short, so I'm moving the car back and forth. So I'm turning the car over, it takes a few times to start when it's cold, not a very good cold map on it. Um, starts a bit of a lumpy, runs fine then. Um, but it's turning the water around, it's water pumps turning, turning, turning because it's dripping off a belt, um, off the bottom of pulley and stuff. Anyhow, I went up the other day, I thought I, pipes just a bit hard, so I took a cap off. And it was pressure in it, so I was like, oh my gosh, what's this? Overthinker, I am bad, it is what I am, an overthinker. Um, so, drove it, everything was okay. Um, drove the car down the end of the road, turned it around to drive in the garage every other day. And as soon as I turned it off, I could hear, I was like, what the hell is that? looked like the overfill cap was leaking a bit of water and that's its job when it gets to like 15 psi it's supposed to depressurize less stuff out but the car wasn't warm or anything so i thought to myself oh my god i've cracked the head it's got a crack in the head the head is lifted there's exhaust gases getting into the water and pressurizing the system so i couldn't believe it it wasn't getting hot on the temperature gauge because I've got a temperature gauge, which is a fourth one, which isn't great. And I've got the ECU master one, which has been calibrated sensors from EFI parts. Um, but again, I don't know how good the calibration is on that. I put some videos up. Um, and I pressure the system, it bubbles in it. But again, people have said, uh, thanks for helping sort my head out when you put the cap off. You introduce in cold air and stuff into it, and it's not a pressure system, so it will boil over, revving it, that's getting bubbles through, and did a sniff test on it, which is a head gasket test, okay? So you put it in, you put a bit of blue fluid in, and it was bouncing everywhere. I was like, Jesus, there's a lot of pressure in here. But every time this car starts, I get sloshing. So in the heater matrix. So it's always hard bit of an airlock. I cannot get out of it. I've been from Ragweld over the years and previous owners. It's 33 year old. So after all that anyway, um, I come to the conclusion, my head gasket's gone. But again, that was me overthinking. But part of that being is that I left the test on and it went, I put a photo up now, like a light green. And I was like, it's gone, green is gone. But it wasn't, yellow is gone. Green is, it's been on too long, it's got hot. And I did leave it on for six, seven minutes. Um, 
Anyway, long story short, next day I went out. Um, I let all coolant out. I just filled it up with fresh water. Um, I left the cap off on the drive. So I let all the pressure out and stuff like that. Anything would have been in there, very rarely. Got the front jacked up. Um, and I went for 45 minutes. And it was only up to like 90 odd degrees and stuff. I think it was like 95 or more, so my digital reader. Um, I was happy. But I have come to the conclusion that possibly when this car is getting hot, to an extensive hot, maybe it is opening up some dryer and it's letting water through. It's not using water really, it doesn't mix any water, it's not having running issues, it's not having this fight or anything, but the car's got to be on about 130 odd thousand, 135 thousand now probably, because I've changed the clocks. Um, but it's been boosted for four years on stock standard interiors, inter internals. So it's dead. It's going to get me through the rest of the year, hopefully. Um, and then I'm going to acquire an engine and a good friend. And he is a good friend because he helped me do the ECU and stuff. And I need to pick up James, you are a superstar. Um, he's taught me through it. We are going to get another engine. We're going to stick in forged rods, forged pistons, ARP bolts, new bottom end bearings, all that kind of stuff change the head gasket on it, we've got to adjust the compression, get the block machines and all that kind of stuff to fit these pistons in. Um, crazy cage manifold, nice tubular kind of thing, and a new table and a new downpipe, and maybe a bigger set of injectors. Um, which does then mean I will have my turbo set up available for sale. There is somebody in the pipeline already who wants it. I think Jason wants it, or we will build on his. Um, but it's already both got a turbo kit. And I could go for 300 brake, I could go for 400 brake, okay? Which then takes me on to the next part. This Escort, okay, right? Featured in Fast Forward Magazine. Didn't it? Hold on. There we are. Fast Forward Magazine. Displayed on their stand, okay, right? You do not get replica cars in magazines anymore, okay? It's frowned upon. It's quoted, this is the best replica, and it is, it's unnoticeably good, okay? People don't know it's a rep, okay? They do know it's a rep, okay, locally, because I scream about it, I tell them it's a rep. I, I've i got a YouTube channel, Boosted 2000, which is about it being a rep. Um, it's got everything, it's everything inside and outside is there. Um, there are other reps out there, and it's good, and it's bad with everything. But Matthew said to me, he said, let's get five litres of paint, Dan. The new math, legend. And let's paint this car again. It's been painted nearly for like 21 months now. And fiberglass will have settlements and cracks. And you will walk around this car and it is flawless. But I know, and Matthew knows, being painted and preps and stuff like that, together between us, and I'm not I. But we know there are little things that we want to do better to make it even better. So I am putting the challenge out there. This is already in my eyes, and in a lot of other people's eyes, the best rep out there. And that's being a bold, big head statement. I hope I don't offend anybody with that. But all these cars go through, you're not going to beat it. We are going to be the best. We built it ourselves. We painted ourselves. We're doing the engine ourselves. We're doing the ECU ourselves, right? Between us as friends. It's not going out to have any work ever done on it. This is a home-built hero car on our budget. Um, and I'm just so fucking proud of it, okay? It is the best car ever. Um, it causes me stress, it causes me anxiety. I was talking to a subscriber in the chat, in the comments, and uh, I got myself teary the other day when I thought I'd, I'd killed it, when I thought my head had gone on it. And we were sharing some stuff together about saying how cars are killing us, and but the cars and this channel has helped him through. So I'm entirely grateful for that. So big chug up and thank you. And I do look forward to seeing you in Castle Castle if you do make it. Make sure you say hi. But yeah, this car is going to be a stormer. We were going to put an SD170, we got one, an SD170 lump in for Focus RS manifolds. I've been talking to Taz, as Taz, and he's told me how to get it in. Um, I was going to put a mark on Focus RS lump in it. But no, I'm keeping the RS 2000 engine in it, and I'm going to boost the fuck out of it and forge it between us, and then we're going to get this car. Um, it's going to be. If people say these are German cars, I'd be like, nah, it's better. I've already some of us feel like saying that now. I'd be like, nah, it's better. So 
listen stick around watch your channel continue to enjoy it if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe um, hopefully the engine does last the end of the show season um, I can't see why not it's done time so I've just done 10 miles in and I've got no issues it's not leaking any coolant I'm gonna get this lower arm swapped out and get some actual coolant into the car instead of just water because the boiling point is different um, and I'll hopefully see you guys at Cars in the Castle and come up and say hi and hopefully I'll get a good video logged about that but yeah until next time hit sub hit like enable notifications and I'll see you then Cheers. <laughs>